We're going to worship this morning. I'm not sure what's going on, but we're going to just hang out and wait until it all comes to life. It's all right. What's we got up, it. Brayden. It's coming. It's coming to life. Just like the, this is just like the, the song that we're going to sing. We're going to sing a new song once everything gets going. Were you on mute keys to an electric guitar? There. It's awake now. Jacob? We're going to wake up now. It goes with the song too. Here we go. Let's try it again. All right, good morning. If you're out in the fellowship hall, you're going to want to come in. And if you came asleep, you better wake up. Here we go.
you, Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you, God. We worship you in this place, God. God, we ask that you would come alive in this place, God, that your spirit would flow in this place, God. God.
get to partake of communion together, we can start passing out those elements. You know, at my role, there's, or at my house, there's a role. There's no what at the table. No, no phones at the table. Do you guys have a similar rule? Like, in fact, sometimes my phone's at the table and my kids are like, mom, no phones at the table. I'm like, dang it. Uh, because we want to be together. And when we want to soak in each other, we want to know how our day was. We want to hear about each other's lives. Jesus is asking and inviting us to have that intimate moment with him at his table. And communion is such a reflection of that. And at the Last Supper, in Matthew 26, verse 26, it says, Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus wants to share his self with you, and sometimes we're so distracted by everything that we don't even recognize that he's saying, come, I want to give myself to you. And then it says, and he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. For this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus, the, the song says there's no condemnation at the table. If that, he just says, he says, come to my table so I can forgive you. Uh, I look at some people in my life that I need to forgive and honestly, I don't really want them at my table. They've hurt me. And Jesus is saying, I want you at my table, not just to eat with you. I want to give myself to you. I want to forgive you. My dad's brother, my uncle, he was eating lunch with his wife last, this Monday, six days ago, and went to move some snow in the driveway and died of a stroke suddenly. That man was with the Lord all of the time. And we had a worship night at his house last night with about 50-ish family members. And we talked about how all he wanted to do to those around is to say, Jesus wants to forgive you. He wants to spend eternity with you in heaven. And as we take communion today, I ask that you reflect on your life. Maybe there are some things that you need to repent of. If you are not a Christian, then communion is not for you. But if you are not a Christian, this is a good time to say, Jesus, I want to be at your table. Please forgive me. And we know he's willing because that's what he said at his last supper. He said he wants to forgive you. And that is a decision you can make right here as you, as you drink this cup. So let's take that bread and let's hold it up together. And we say, God, thank you. Heavenly, precious Father, we say thank you for not just inviting us to your table, for forgiving us, for, for sacrificing your body so we can be healed, so we can be saved, so on our dying breath here on earth, we can have eternity with you in heaven. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. You may partake of the bread. Now let's hold that cup up with no distractions. God, we are in tune with you at your table, in your presence, at your feet. And you have given us this cup willingly. And with a humble heart, we say thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary to be the ultimate sacrifice once and for all so we can be forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. You may partake of the cup.
We don't know when our dying breath is going to be, and so let's not waste one minute. Let's be caught up in the presence of the Lord, not thinking about who's around you, if someone is tone deaf singing behind you, if whatever it may be, if you're hungry. Instead, we just want to be caught up in the presence of the Lord in his beauty and his splendor. Let's finish this time up of worship without wasting a minute and pouring our adoration out to our Heavenly Father. I'm caught up in your presence and I just wanna sit here Just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I just sang another song, who take me back to where we started? I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry. When I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, who take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Oh, I'm caught up in your prayer. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for a blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I just want you and nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. Nothing else will do 
Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. wanna sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never wanna leave oh I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. God, may that be the prayer in our heart, God. The only thing that we want. that we press into you, God, and that the distractions that we carried into this place, God, that we would lay them at your feet and the focus would be you and you alone, God. God, forgive us. Forgive us, God, when we have put the world, possessions, our family, God, anything in front of you. God, forgive us. God, help us, God, to come back to the heart of worship, God, and to keep the main thing, the main thing, and that is you. God, be with us, Lord. Fill this place with your spirit, God, as we, we just reflect and we worship you, God. We just want you, God. We just want you, we just want to be in your presence. So as we sing that again, that we just want you and nothing else, God, I pray that this would be a time of sweet surrender, a time of sweet worship and offering to lay at your feet, God. God, I pray that, Lord, that if this altar needs to be filled with people, God, that you would fill it up, God, with people that just want you, that would raise their hands up to you, God. So as we sing this again, God, as we come back into a heart of worship and we put you first, God, I pray that nothing else, nothing else takes your place, God. Let's sing this together. Let's bring this deck back in. And I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do i just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do i just want you 
nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you oh nothing else nothing else we need presence God be in our midst we welcome you in this place because nothing else can take your place God we give you our lives God we give you our worship our praise because you alone are worthy of it God we ask all of these things in your precious holy wonderful name in Jesus name and all God's people said Amen, amen. Well, thank you again for joining us here at Life Church. You can take a seat as we go on to our next part of service. Well, good morning. How many people love worship? Man, nothing, nothing like being in the presence of the Lord Almighty. Amen. Many, many great things happen in the presence of God. So make sure, not just on Sunday mornings, but in your car, in your home, wherever you're at, Get into the presence of God, man. It is, it is life-changing. Well, we have a few announcements that we want to give to you. And when you sat down today, you probably saw like a stack of papers. And we normally don't give you this much stuff. Um, but we did because we have a lot of important things that are coming up and going on. And we want to make sure you're aware. And one of them is just we want to thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your tithes and your offering in your giving unto the Lord. And uh, the Word of God says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And so uh, ushers are passing uh, the bags around, and there's even drop boxes. If you want to give something uh, before or after service, feel free to do that. We can, you can also give online. Uh, you can go to our website. You can go to our church app, and it'll easily guide you uh, to where to do that. And so a few announcements that we want to direct your attention to today is today is Life Group Kickoff Sunday. And so what that means, if you've never been to Life Church, is we set up tables and the Life Group leaders are there. They decorate the table. They try to entice you. They'll whistle at you. They'll, no, I'm just joking. They won't. But um, they want you to come in and talk to them about the Life Group that they are teaching this coming semester, which actually start on the 15th. Uh, it's a Wednesday. And so we've got, I kid you not, this semester, I think, from the zone all the way downstairs into the offices, we have almost every teaching um, and classroom filled with a life group this semester. And so lots of lots of good things going on. One of the things that take place on, uh, if you want to grab this real quick, I'm just going to run through it. Uh, it's, on your, uh, it's on your chair, winter, spring, 2023. It says life groups on the other side. Um, but one of the things that takes place every single Sunday is we have a prayer meeting every Sunday because we believe... That prayer is what helps fuel the presence of God for our services, for our week, in our lives, in our marriages, in our families. And so we would encourage you, come be a part of that. That's from 9 to 9.30. It's back here in the zone. And uh, just follow the worship music and, and uh, you'll find it. Uh, we also have... Women's group that meets on Wednesdays, uh, every single Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30, our life groups meet here on Wednesdays, except for our students. Our students go a half hour longer because it takes Pastor Katie so long to get them to calm down. No, I'm just joking. Um, but... <laughs> No, they just, they have a lot to pack in. Their Sunday is on Wednesday, and they have a lot to pack in, and, uh, and Pastor Katie uh, does an amazing job, her and her team. Season Saints is the second Tuesday of every month here at the church, 6.30. There's often a meal that's provided, or there is a meal every time. We even have a, a sewing group called So What? And that's how those ladies are. They're like, so what? Or, you know, no, they're like, so what? You know, and lots of different ways you can say it. Um, the Zone on Wednesday nights, Pastor Nicole, otherwise known as Captain Hamburger, um, it's a little bit shocking when you're out shopping at TJ Maxx and you hear a kid from the other side of the store in Waterloo, like, Captain Hamburger, Captain Hamburger. And uh, we're like, 
who knows who is that and uh and kids recognize her let me just tell you wednesday nights in the zone are mind-blowing amazing and uh there's actually a sheet on your chair that's dedicated it tells you everything that's going to be going on nerf wars valentine's day party karate party ner- uh, easter egg hunt cereal bowl party tea party chef it up and so all of those dates uh, she's got it all laid out here i mean she is li- literally putting on captain hamburger is putting on an evangelistic outreach every single wednesday and it is a ton of time and it is just an amazing service for our kids and you might be like okay but yeah what do they talk about during karate night well we talk about how we kick satan in the face and so um but there is there Nicole does a beautiful job um, segueing and bringing everything together. And the main thing is the main thing every Wednesday. And that is it's all about Jesus. It's about our relationship with him. It's how we can grow even at those young ages and we can develop into warriors for the kingdom of God. And so uh, they will hear about Jesus every Wednesday. Don't let, uh, don't let this fool you, but there is a tremendous turnout, not only from our church, but we've got kids coming from all over the community and also to our student ministries. And so lots and lots of great things happening there. We've got a women's group that meets here every Wednesday. Gina teaches that. Um, and then we also have the table, which is a community women's group. And that is the second Monday of each month. And that meets out at Riverwood, which is out by the Recycle Center, uh, Riverwood Church there. They're the, they're the host church for that. And so that's women from all over the community come together for that. Celebrate Recovery uh, meets here every Monday, 6.30 to 8.30. There's a few of them in the house right here. And uh, great, great stuff happening there. There's a meal that starts at 5.15. And uh, it is excellent. Financial Peace University we're offering again this semester. And what an opportunity to be proactive in taking control and having control of your finances. And so maybe you need a little bit of help. Maybe you need a lot of help. Maybe you don't need any help at all. Let me just tell you, you will at some point. And Financial Peace is a great opportunity to get to uh, dive into these technical things and and the, the spiritual backing and all of it. So it's absolutely dynamic. Kingdom Culture, our, our 6th through 12th grade ministry, uh, meets three doors down. It's a complete, its own building and driveway and parking lot and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, that's from 6.30 to 8 every uh, Wednesday as well. And then as well as our men's ministry called Forge Men's Ministry. And Ryan Greenwell teaches that. And that is Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7.30 in the multi-purpose room and then we've got instay global bible college and that is something that is that is taught and maybe you're just like you know what i want to dive deeper i want to i want to dive deeper you're like i don't want to become a pastor and get a pastoral license that's your loss you can do that you can go through instay and do that um but uh maybe you're just like i want to i just want to know more i want to dive deeper i want to get down into some nitty-gritty and and uh and really get into some bible memorization and and kind of in an, an organized uh type uh setting that is in stay and uh stop and talk to pastor katie about that uh she teaches that and so that is just an an excellent way to dive deeper into god's word in your learning and uh excellent excellent stuff one other thing is there's a women's conference coming up and let me just tell you it is going to be amazing um, I personally know the speaker. She's one of the most beautiful people that I know inside and outside. And uh, this happens to be my wife, and Pastor Nicole. And, uh, yeah. woo! and uh, she's going to be the conference speaker. And so we put together uh, just why should you go? What are the costs? Where is it? It's at Clear Lake uh, Open Bible Church. And uh, it is March 31st through April 1st. So it's just a one night stay over there they've got a barcode scanner for all you techie ladies and you want to just scan that you can register right there right then um or you can go to the website or there's a phone number to call so that is going to be a dynamic time i i don't know how many ladies we have signed up already but we've got quite a few that are going to be attending that from life church and so that is going to be an excellent excellent weekend if you have any questions, uh, you can see Pastor Nicole or just look at the sheet because I think everything is answered here or on their website. And so um, excellent, good, great 
amazing things coming up. Well, I have the honor today. This weekend is uh, a little bit extra special for Nicole and I because for me, I've got three mentors in my life that have been part of my life for years that are that are that are here this weekend. Uh, my dad, which has uh, been with me since birth, and uh, and. Uh, <laughs> mentored me even with a leather belt sometimes and uh i'm not afraid i deserved it i deserved it there's uh and then uh pastor gary which is nicole's dad and then also uh someone that is also our guest speaker today which is uh pastor bruce and robin fadenauer and they are the central region directors they are also the vice president of open bible standard churches and uh, so it's a huge honor. Uh, we know them. Uh, I just want to say thank you for taking my emails. Thank you for taking my calls. Thank you for putting up with me, which I tell that to everybody in my life. And uh, uh, no, it's just a huge honor to have you here today. And I know it's been a number of years since you've been here. And so would you please give Pastor Bruce and Robin a Life Church welcome as they come to the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Matt. It is a delight to be back in Waverly. It's been a while, and uh, yet we can see a lot of good things that God is doing. Uh, just being a part of the worship this morning, the Lord spoke to my heart. And uh, we actually are here because we want to honor your pastors. And uh, we so value Matt and Nicole, both of them. They're incredible people. And uh, I actually uh, was assigned to help recruit you to come here years ago. And uh, it was divine. It really was. It really was the hand of God. And uh, we really didn't know you well, but we've gotten to know you guys really well. And uh, they not only serve you well, but they serve our Open Bible family well. Matt serves on the Instay Board of Directors, and uh, Nicole serves on the Regional Board of Directors. And uh, so we, we get lots of uh, connect times through the year, and uh, we are here to honor them with something special today. Um, first of all, Open Bible, well, it's been my family all of my life, Open Bible really doesn't call men and women of God. Uh, I can tell you this, the Holy Spirit yes. is who does that. Yes. And, and I'll tell you, there's no better hands to be in than the Holy Spirit. And uh, Acts chapter 20, uh, the Apostle Paul was making it clear that this is the Holy Spirit's work that called you guys into ministry and said, I've got a special task for you to do. And so we, we recognize that. Now, Open Bible has uh, things like bylaws and procedures and ethics. That's not to keep you guys in line with Open Bible. That's to keep you in line with him. Because we all are following the same king. And, uh, you know, it's his church. And so we, as leaders in the church, surrender ourselves to him. Now, Open Bible gives three different kinds of ministry licenses. We have a basic license for those who have some education and experience, but they need something more. And then we have a certified license which says you have all of the required education, you have all the required experience, and then ordination is something that is really our highest level of ministerial license. And we, we reserve that for people that really are excelling and really leading the way and modeling the way. And uh, the nice thing is in the last couple of years, instead of applying for that, uh, Open Bible decided to say, when regional leaders recognize that uh, you really are excelling, then we can confer that on you. So you don't have to ask for it. You don't apply for it. You're just recognized as, you know what, we need to grant that. And uh, so we are really uh, grateful today. This last year, our regional board said, Matt and Nicole, you guys are stellar. You stand out, and uh, we're thankful for that. Not only for the Waverly Church that you lead, 
But we're thankful in Open Bible, your standouts, and you're leading the way with uh, great examples. And uh, so today we want to present you your ordination uh, licenses and uh, fold that flap over, if you would, because we want to have proof and evidence for the world to see <laughs> that this is no joke. This is very sincere. Robin, stand on the other side of Nicole, if you would, and we'll get a good picture. And uh, I, I want to uh, read, uh, I need my phone back, sorry. Thank you so much for taking the picture for us. Uh, Matt and Nicole, I want to read you uh, just a short passage of scripture today. And this to me, uh, this was Paul's encouragement to Timothy. And uh, I, I can guarantee you these words have been like life to me along the way. And it's appropriate here at Life Church. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 12. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. You are. So it's a matter of perspective. You're younger than we are. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your tasks. I know that about both of them. They do that. Throw yourself into your tasks so that everyone will see your progress. But keep a close watch on how you live, and on your teaching. There's a lot of people compromising in their life, a lot of pastors compromising the truth. I know you guys, you're strong to maintain that and stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. We love you guys. We want to pray over you guys. Would you stand with me? And stretch out your hands to your pastors. They love you. They pour it out for you. And we're grateful. God, we're thankful for these two gifts in Matt and Nicole Miller. Thank you, Lord, that uh, they both are uniquely gifted and qualified to lead your church. And they're doing so with excellence here in Waverly. We're thankful, Lord, for their strong, bold leadership that's not afraid to take a stand, not afraid to speak out, not afraid to draw a line in the sand. And, and Lord, we've seen that in, in many different times in their leadership. And so, Father, we, we thank you that we can confer ordination license, the highest level of recognition in open Bible, that these guys are leading well and, and leading the way. Thankful, Lord, for young leaders that are looking at their lives and saying, I, I want to lead that way one day. And Father, I am thankful for the way that you're using them, not only here in Waverly, but even beyond this city, to reach the world for Jesus. We give you thanks for them. Pray blessing over them and their family. May you strengthen them and give them great days ahead for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, I am uh, honored to be able to preach here today, and, and I want to say I don't take that lightly. Uh, every time I get an opportunity to preach... I want to I hear from the Lord, and I have heard from the Lord. And I did not think of this at all until we were standing right down here during worship. And I was like, I had this Holy Spirit moment. And uh, when I was a young person, and I grew up in the church, but hey, listen, I needed Jesus just like everybody out on the street. You know, we all have our stuff. 
And uh, I needed the Lord to save me. I needed the Lord to straighten me out. I needed the Lord to set me on a good straight path. And uh, I memorized a lot of verses. And one of my favorite verses I memorized was out of the text we're going to read together this morning. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. I'll tell you why that verse was so important to me. Because that verse held some keys that would change my life forever. And it also was the address of the house where I lived. I lived at 1013 Washington Street in Pella, Iowa. And it was like when I memorized that verse, it was like God saying, I know where you live. (laughs) And you're going to need this verse to live for me. And uh, so I'm standing down here and I'm like, I think the address of this house is 1013. And I got my phone out and I'm like, it is. So I'm like, the Holy Spirit was like, Bruce, you have the nugget from the word today for life church. And so let's look at these uh, two verses, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13 in the ESV. And it says this. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Title of today's message is The Optics of Overcoming. I am so grateful for the uh, invitation to come to the table this morning. I love those words, no condemnation. And there was another little phrase. I didn't get the whole phrase, but the word shame stood out to me. And uh, I'm working on another message, and the title of it is Shame Off You. Because, you know, I've heard the words shame on you. I like the word shame off you. Those are the words of Jesus to people, and you can find that through the cross. But here's a reality. Growing up in the church, I gave my heart to Christ very young, but I want to tell you, I have faced challenges. I have faced struggle, and uh, and, and this is what I know. God has a plan for you and I, and he wants us to be overcomers. And so I want to give you a secret about overcoming. And I will tell you, this is an old verse. I memorized it years ago. But this last month, in my own personal scripture reading, I was reading out of this chapter, and I saw three points. I was like, I don't know why I'm going to preach this, but I have a sense that God's going to use this, and today's the day. The optics of overcoming. Optics is the scientific study of sight and the behavior of light. Now, why I chose that word is I want us to take a closer look at what it takes to be an overcomer. How many of you would like to be an overcomer? Not only on Sunday, but even on Monday. Would you like to be an overcomer on Monday? This will help you. The optics of overcomer, we're going to, of overcoming, we're going to take a closer look. We're going to shed some light on something very important. And then that word overcoming is to succeed in dealing with a problem or a difficulty. How many of you have ever had a problem? Don't look at the person next to you as you raise your hand. They'll get real uncomfortable. How many of you have ever faced difficulties in life? I will tell you, uh, we all are going to face those challenges, those difficulties, but I want to say this to you. God in his word has given you a a couple of things that can help you overcome. The difficulty I'm talking about this morning is temptation. I want to tell you, Jesus was an expert with temptation. Because right before he goes into his earthly ministry, the devil tempts him in some big ways and he overcomes. And so uh, we're going to look at some things that can help us overcome. Now, the word temptation in the Greek talks about a fierce intensity. 
I, I can tell you this, older, younger, middle-aged, men, women, it doesn't matter your background, all of us are going to face temptation, some fierce intensity in our life. And, uh, and, and I want you to know temptations can come from within and temptations can come from without. Let me quickly tell you, within is kind of out of our own flesh, out of our mind. Uh, God's created us with a mind, but sometimes our mind goes in funny places, not so good places. And even our heart, uh, I, I will tell you, I've heard this phrase so many times, just follow your heart. I say, don't follow your heart. It's deceitful. Uh, your heart can get you in some bad places. And so that's, that's sometimes where the temptations can come from. It's just your own thinking, your own feelings. But then also we have temptations that come from without. And the reality is we all have a common enemy, Satan. He doesn't want you to overcome. He wants you to be a loser. And Jesus has come to make you an overcomer. And, and I think that's a great thing. But there's also sometimes bad influences around us, people that don't have our best in their sight. So temptations can come from without and from within. I also learned this as a teenager. I, I'd every Sunday night get real determined. Lord, I'm going to do better this week than I did last week. And I'd pray and I'd get kind of fired up. And I get out, and sometimes by Monday noon, I wasn't winning. And uh, the Lord showed me one day, he said, your willpower and your determination is not strong enough to overcome. You need my help. So I want you to know, regardless of where you are in your life, the Lord has given some keys here to help you. And here's the first optic. Optic number one, we are not to assume. We're not to assume. And that comes out of verse 12 when it says, we should take heed. If we're standing today, we should take heed lest we fall. Now, Paul is the writer of this passage writing under the unction and anointing of the Holy Spirit, and he's writing to the Corinthians who tended to get a little puffed up in themselves. Uh, the Corinthians were what I call kind of overachievers. They were very confident in themselves, and that wasn't always a good thing. You see, Paul, uh, in what he's saying here, he's kind of giving us a warning, reminds me of a verse in Proverbs 16, 18 that says, pride will set you up for a fall or for failure. So I can feel pretty good about myself this morning and all of a sudden by four o'clock this afternoon, I am fl flat on my face thinking, why did I do that? And so uh, I want you to be assured that one of the key things here is just we are not to assume. Like when you're at your strongest, don't get too confident. Silly statements my wife and I have heard, and even we learned early in our marriage not to say some of these things. Like, I can't believe they did that. Because that sounds so arrogant. Like, they're so foolish. Why did they even do that? Okay? Because... I've sometimes done the same thing, okay? Uh, that will never happen to me. Robin and I, early in our marriage, we were pastoring a church in Boone, Iowa, and I remember after a counseling session, I looked at my wife and says, wow, that will not happen to me. And it was like the Holy Spirit said, don't get too confident. That can happen to you, okay? So Paul is giving us a big ca caution here of getting overconfident in ourself because here's the thing. Our confidence shouldn't be in us. Our confidence should be in Jesus. He's the one who through the cross relieved us of condemnation. He's the one through the cross that took away the shame. 
And so our confidence needs to be rooted in him. Second optic I want to mention to you this morning is we are not alone. I want you to know something. That's good news today. We are not alone. Now, there's a lot of things in this uh, world which we're living in, this season in which we're in, in which we can talk about our differences. How many of you find the conversation about our differences really helps? I don't. I mean, if, if Robin and I talk about our differences all day, that's a crummy day, okay? But if we can talk about what we have in common, I, I think we can go somewhere. And, and you can say this is a bit weird in my thinking, but I, I want to tell you this. Temptation, it says, none of us are tempted with things that are like really out there. We're tempted with things that are common temptations for everybody in the house. Okay? But see, the devil wants you to think, I've created this temptation so special. Just for you. That's how he lures us in. Oh, a lot of people don't ever have this kind of feeling or thought. But I want you to know it's so special just for you. No, Paul puts that to bed with this reality. He says, there is no temptation that you're going to experience in your life, but that is common to all men. Here's the thing. That puts us all in the same boat. So you can't look down your nose at somebody else across the aisle. You can't look at somebody in front or behind you and say, you know, they need to straighten up. Because we have an appreciation because we all wrestle with temptations in life. It's kind of like the verse Romans 3.23 that says, for all of us have sinned. We have something in common here. We not only have all sinned, but we're all facing temptations in and through our days. Okay? But I'm thankful that we can all be engaged in this temptation battle together. Now, uh, I think about a book, and I, I've given this book to countless guys in my, in my journey uh, in leading the church. It's, it's a book called Every Man's Battle. It was out out in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, it, it was actually written by a couple of uh, gentlemen, Steve Arterburn and Fred Stoker. Fred Stoker's out of the Des Moines area. And it talks about the common temptation for guys with lust and sexuality. Now, I, I just want to say that's just one example of a whole bunch of temptations that we have to battle with in our life. And I don't want to get sidetracked just into one area of temptation because it doesn't really matter. If you're tempted with money, if you're tempted with lying, they're the same roots. And, and so we can, we can get, uh, we've got to be careful about just using one illustration there. I, I want to give you something that will help you on your journey with temptation. And these were helpful for me along my journey I call them temptation triggers. If I'm alone, I'm more subject to temptation. Okay? So if I get off alone, and sometimes the devil will kind of lure me off to my own self, but, but i got to be really aware of that. So when I'm alone, when I'm tired, I am more vulnerable to temptation. So I've got to watch that I'm getting replenished with rest and uh, good eating and good exercise because if I can stay in that regimen, I will do myself a favor in battling temptation. Also, hunger. <laughs> I get tempted when I'm hungry. <laughs> Buffet. You know what I mean? So, uh, the key is uh, not to get circled into this place of being alone. Matter of fact, uh, I shared this uh, message with our staff in our staff meeting this last week. And uh, one of the comments that was shared was it's really helpful 
when we as an individual are battling temptation that we have a trusted confidant we can share with. And I want to tell you, that's been the secret many ways on my pathway is to be able to say I'm really struggling with this particular thing right now. And to know that someone will care enough to say, man, I, I understand what you're walking through. Let's believe God for victory today that will get you to the place of overcoming. Third optic I want to share with you this morning is we have divine assistance. We have divine assistance. I, I want you to know that God hasn't just said, hey, overcome temptation and, and do your best to do that. No, he's given us some great assistance to overcome. Verse 13 says, God is faithful. He will also provide. Now, there's a lot of ways that God can provide for us to overcome with temptation. I, I love this reality, and, and I take this from the story of Job in the Old Testament, that God really governs the gate to our life. Satan really has to get permission from the Lord to mess with us. And I love that fact because that tells me that God, number one, is greater. He has much more authority than the devil will ever have. And God will govern, and he will say yes, or he will say no. And so that tells me that God is in control of this whole uh, experience that we're walking through. But here's how God's going to provide for you. Number one, he's going to give you the Holy Spirit to help you. I am so thankful. When I read in the Gospel of John, chapter 14 and verse 16, it says that the Holy Spirit's going to convict me. So if I've lingered too long with a temptation, I can often hear the Holy Spirit's voice saying, move on. Okay? He not only convicts, but he guides us. Sometimes I can be heading in a direction and the, I can hear the Holy Spirit say, don't go there. Don't go there. Won't be good. And he will also teach us so the Holy Spirit can teach us along our journey of how we can walk in this overcoming life. Second way that God assists us is with his word. Psalm 119.11, another verse I memorized as a boy. It says, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I can tell you many times on my journey, been heading down a path, and all of a sudden a scripture goes, boop. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, God, I thank you for that reminder. So timely. Okay? Well, if you're not in the word and if you're not taking the word into your life, you won't hear those little bloop reminders. Third thing that God provides for us is, is prayer. What a gift. And I think about Jesus in Matthew 26, 41. He, he was giving a great instruction to his disciples. He said, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. I can tell you one, one thing that helps me. When I start feeling some temptation thoughts, or some temptation feelings, is I know if I go to prayer and say, hey, God, thank you that you made me to be a feeling person. Thank you that you gave me a mind. But Lord, I'm struggling right now. And I need you to help me get my thoughts and my feelings back in alignment with the plan that you have for me. Prayer will help you. Okay, here's a couple of other keys, and these are right going to be up there on the notes. A couple of keys that I, I was just hearing the Lord share with me this last month. You have the option of escape or endure. So in the middle of temptation, it says that the Lord will provide a way of escape. 
So here's the thing. You can escape or endure. He, he's going to give you either a way out or a way through. I want to tell you, I always look for the exit. But I haven't got a, an escape route every time I've been in temptation. Sometimes the Lord says, hold on, buckle your seatbelt, because I'm going to take you through this. And as I walk through that moment of temptation, God is giving me strength and encouragement to go the distance and finish well. I actually got this point as I was reading, because my devotions this year, I'm reading in the NLT, and I was reading this passage in the New Living Translation, and it says, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. And I just, I, I saw these two E words, escape or endure. Escape or endure. So in temptation, you're looking for that escape or you're looking for God's strength to endure. I love this. God is always with us. He's always watching over us. And he's always working for our good. That's, that's a great confidence builder for me as I think about facing hour of temptation. Another key is keep your eye on the exit, not on the evil. So temptation is, is a alluring thing to draw you into sin or to draw you into disobedience. And I want you to know you need to keep your eye on the exit because if you keep your eye on the evil, you're going to walk right toward it. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you a little driver's ed reminder. Okay? If you're driving down the interstate, I get to do that quite a bit in my responsibilities. And if you keep your eye like this really beautiful car drives by you on the right, and you start looking at that car, you start driving toward that car. And my wife came home from a Bible study that she was in just in the last year or two, and uh, it was a Lisa Turkeris Bible study, and she said this was so profound. Lisa Turkeris said, you steer where you stare. So, so let me tell you, if Satan pops up a thought or a feeling to lure you off the path, get your eyes off of that quickly. Start looking for the exit, or otherwise you're likely to drive right toward it. So three optics to help us overcome. Number one, we are not to assume. Don't walk with a lot of self-confidence saying, I am strong. I am a strong woman of God. I'm a strong man of God. Be humble and say, God, I need your strength today. Okay? Secondly, know that you're not alone. Your brothers and sisters, your mom and dad, your friends, your, uh, your small group leaders, your pastors, they, they have common temptations just like you, okay? So we're not alone. We're, we're in this together. And then thirdly, we have divine assistance. God's given you his Holy Spirit. He's given you his word. He's given you prayer as tools to help you navigate around temptation. And that will help you be an overcomer. I want to pray for you today. Father, I thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl in this house. I thank you, Lord, that you're so faithful to us to help us on our journey. And God, we, we just recognize today as Paul was teaching in this short passage, temptation is real. The temptation will come our way, even this week. We're all going to find moments of temptation. But God, you've given us the understanding of how we can overcome. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you for help today. Thank you for your Holy Spirit and the word and prayer that will, will be those tools that we can work with temptation and overcome. 
Father, I pray for this body. I pray for every person in it to find strength in this word that will help them win and be a victor on their journey. We give you thanks for your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. What a great, great word. If you're a life group leader, I just want to dismiss you real quick. I have a couple announcements uh, for the rest of the church. But man, what, what a great word. What a great word for this week. Uh, as we all deal with temptation and we all deal with distractions and we all deal with the enemy speaking into our life and trying to speak over our life and change the trajectory of where we're going. Man, take that with you this week. Hang it in your office, on your uh, refrigerator. Let those just let those notes just speak to you and the Holy Spirit to use them. Thank you, Pastor Bruce, for, for that excellent word today. Well, I just want to ask for your help real quick before we go, because everyone's going to visit a life group table. I can just feel it in the place today. So, uh, But before you go today, if you are able, we are actually uh, changing the lights out in our worship center this week, and we are going to make a big, huge mess. And so if you could help us stack chairs, six to seven chairs tall, and we are going to put them against the, uh, the my right, your left wall out in the uh, fellowship hall in the multipurpose room. That would be greatly appreciated. And uh, we're actually going to get started this afternoon. So when you come back in here next week, Lord willing, these will all be different. We've had a failing light system for a while. As you can see, there's some lights that don't even work. And so, uh, and so we're able to go ahead and replace these. Thank you, Jesus. And so uh, that will be done by the time you come back here next Sunday. So if you'd stand to your feet with me today. If you're here with us. And maybe it's your first, second, third time, or maybe you're online with us and you want to know more about Jesus, please find someone today. Talk to them. Don't leave this place until you have some of your questions answered or you've touched base with someone. We would love to talk with you more about who Jesus is and all that he means and the reason we show up on a Sunday, Wednesday, whatever day uh, to worship and honor him. So be blessed. Have a great week in the Lord. Take those sheets with you. Those are great reminders. Lots of great things coming up. Be blessed. Have a great